Hey guys, welcome to Moose's Machinery. We're gonna have a brief discussion on drilling and tapping tiny holes and a few tricks on them. Now, these aren't something that are really terribly hard to do once you've gone and done a few of them, but they can be a little intimidating at first because you're probably gonna break a bunch of very small taps. And in this case, we did a 440 tap into some not annealed, but not uh, normalized O1, probably in the Rockwell C20s based on how it machined. And we did it first try, which is definitely, you know, that that's a win in my opinion. Uh, now what's nice with a lot of the 440 taps where they're neck down, I've noticed at least the ones I buy, they tend to break right here. So they're pretty easy to grab with a pair of pliers and back out. So that's, that's good there. But if you don't have one or you want to make one, a tap follower is a really, really nice tool to have. And it basically works by you hold it in the drill chuck and it gives you some spring pressure down on the tap handle and helps keep make, keeps your tap straight as it goes in. Keeping your tap straight is very important. Now, I also use uh, spiral point or gun taps in these smaller sizes, unless I know I'm doing a blind hole. If it's a through hole or there's even remotely room for chips, I'll always use a gun tap because you don't need to stop and break the chips even when tapping by hand, they get pushed out the bottom. And while they don't take as much lateral force to break, I find chip binding in these smaller taps is more of an issue than a uh, lateral force once you're using a tap follower. And another really important thing to do is to not disturb your setup. Like once you've drilled that hole, if you're doing this sequentially, is don't move the machine around more than you absolutely have to. And I, I use the knee to crank the machine up and down. So I'm not moving the table, even though I do have a DRO. Uh, and I also don't use the, uh, quill too much i like to have everything sucked up tight because for me it just makes a little bit more comfortable height to work at uh, my mill is lifted up but i'm six foot four so most bridge ports are fairly low for me once you put a drill chock in the, a tap follower in them so they're below waist height you know other people don't have that issue you know i think average height in this country for men's about 510 so What's an uncomfortable height for me is probably a perfectly comfortable height for most people. Uh, I also, I do like these um, depth stops. This is just a, I always like them. Uh, they're cheap. I got this one on Amazon for I think like 15 or $18. I'll link it in the description. And good sharp taps are important for small holes. So when we break this down is tap follower, good tap wrench, tap holder, uh, power tapping is a different game changer. We're not going to get into that. I don't power tap small taps for a lot of reasons. Uh, but again, tap follower, good tap wrench, good sharp tap, straight holes. Once you have those, it's fairly easy to tap small holes. But also, um, we're just going to pretend that this is in the part. When I'm starting, I just use two or three fingers like this. Uh, put downward force, push in, make sure you bite on that, those first couple threads, and then just some finger action. Uh, because under, I think like about a number eight tap, I, with my hand strength, can start them like that. Um, depending on materials, I can do them with number tens. Uh, sometimes in like, say, aluminum, I can do that with a quarter 20. Uh, but this really does almost guarantee that you're not putting side load on the tap. And you can see I'm pushing pretty hard into the table like this and nothing rocks. That helps a lot. Um, tap, spiral point taps do tend to have a self-straightening effect to a degree. In uh, this method also it generally gets pretty, pretty good sized holes. And, and again, like the key takeaway to this is don't side load the tap and don't let the flutes pack up with chips. And if you're not sure you use enough cutting oil, put more on until you can't see what you're doing. Uh, I've never regretted an excessive amount of lubrication for tasks like this. It does add to the cleanup, but it's still worth it. And this is just a pretty simple uh, boring bar. I will throw it in the boring bar, boring head really quick. Uh, 
Uh, I'm not going to go digging for Allen keys, but I'll just show you what it's for. We'll need a little bit of deburring um, and cleaning out. But so that hole's filthy, so it doesn't fit. But that that's an insert tool for the boring bar. I like these insert tools. I think you get a much better finish than you do with the non-inserted tools, at least for the same amount of effort. And I can take a little bit heavier cut because they have a nice chip breaker built in. Uh, these triangular CCMTs are a pretty good tool to have if you have a smaller lathe. I think you can remove a lot of material quickly. Uh, the insert corners don't last terribly long because it's a very small corner radius. But, you know, it's just, they work. I, I'm very happy with the tool and it does what I need it to do. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope this helps any of you who are struggling with breaking smaller taps.